more than 40 years ago in a tiny auditorium in the Bahamas. A tall, skinny, 17-year-old kid played basketball for the very first time. That kid was my dad, Michael Thompson. Even though he could barely play, he fell in love with the game, and within a few months, my grandfather arranged for him to go to America to pursue his dream of being a basketball player. Six years after arriving in Miami, that dream became a reality when he was chosen first overall in the NBA draft. Michael Thompson, number 43, the Minnesota rookie, and hits it. Back then, my father never could have imagined how the game of basketball would change the course of his life. And mine as well. The Golden State Warriors select Clay Thompson from Washington State University. When it comes to our careers, a lot of people think like father, like son. Uh, have a good game. You feel good? You look good. But not so fast. Our paths to the NBA are different. That's why my brother Mikey and I have come to Nassau with my dad, so he can show us firsthand where it all began. Clay's a basketball player, Michael's a basketball player, and it's, it's always nice to know your history, you know, the history of your family. You know, this is just another chapter in the Thompson family tree, history tree, and uh, it's good to know where it all started. All right, what about you, Clay? You taking a timeout? Uh, no, I need it. Oh, you going back in? Yeah. I've been coming to Nassau with my dad since I was a kid, and on every visit, he connects with his past. Do you remember who this guy is? This is Michael Thompson, sir. In Los Angeles, my dad's a celebrity, but in Bahamas, he's an icon. This has really been a tremendous warm welcome to the Hayman hero of basketball in the country, Michael Thompson. It's finally time to learn how my dad made his way to the NBA. Our first stop, the house where he grew up. Welcome to Thompson Court. You are now on hallowed ground, boys. So this is the court. When I was growing up and playing on it, it doesn't seem as small as it does right now, that's for sure. It just seemed natural to be out there shooting. Over there was like a, like a cement table, so it wasn't like a lot of room to move around. It was very uh, a small and compact, but it was a lot of fun. It was my court, and that's all that mattered. Well, boys, you are now walking onto Bahamian basketball history. This is uh, our Rucker Park, which they have in New York, where the best basketball players in New York congregated to play. This was for the Bahamas. This was it for us. We call this the Priory. You didn't step foot on this court unless you knew you could play the game. I hate to admit it, but I was, uh, I was, I wasn't, let's put it this way, I wasn't so confident that I could play and keep up with these guys back in those days when I was 16, 17 years of age. So I never came out here to test myself against the best basketball players in the Bahamas. I was a little uh, too shy to come out here and try it. So how did a kid who was afraid to compete on local courts in Nassau find the courage to play in the NBA just six years later? This is where luck, or maybe fate, comes in. In 1972, a high school coach from Miami came to Nassau to recruit another player by the name of Charles Thompson. The coach mistakenly ended up at my dad's house looking for Charles. He realized his mistake, but after meeting my dad, who was 17 and 6 feet 8 at the time, the coach begged my grandfather to send him to Miami so he could play for his team. My grandfather could have found a million reasons to say no. No one had ever left the island to pursue a basketball scholarship. But he wanted a future for his son, so he trusted the coach and he let him go. Once my dad was there, he found the strength within himself to compete, work hard, and start making his dream come true. Two years after moving to Miami, he became a high school All-American and earned a scholarship to the University of Minnesota. 
Big Ten basketball history was made when Thompson hit a turnaround jumper. Four years after that, that once timid kid became the college player of the year. And in 1978, before Hakeem Olajuwon or Yao Ming, he made NBA history by being the first foreign-born player to be drafted number one overall. If my dad's story ended there, it would read like a fairy tale. But believe it or not, it gets even better. In 1987, he was traded to L.A., where he went on to win back-to-back -back NBA titles with the Lakers. The champagne is flowing in the locker room of the NBA champion Los Angeles Lakers. When he returned home to Nassau that summer, the entire island celebrated its champion. Michael Thompson is indeed a Bahamian sports hero. He is satisfied that he received a hero's welcome in Nassau. If it brings back so many memories, but this is my shot right here. Today, the course seems smaller. The rims don't seem as high. And the competition probably wasn't that tough. But every place we visit plays a role in his journey. And our final stop recognizes the man my dad credits the most for his career. The last time I was here, I laid my grandfather to rest. After 94 years, DeWitt Thompson, the cornerstone of the family, was gone. I'm so glad he lived long enough to see me and my brother play in the NBA. After his first NBA championship, my dad gave his ring to his dad. I wear this with pride. You can see it right on my finger even today. 1987, the first ring that he got, he gave it to me. My grandfather wore it every day until the day he died. Being here, I feel a sense of gratitude towards my grandfather that I had never felt before. I realize now that so much of my success is owed to him. You know, it starts with uh, your grandfather. Everything I accomplished wouldn't have taken place. You guys wouldn't be where you are today. He allowed me to go to the States to you know, pursue my dream. When you look back at my dad's journey to the NBA, some people say he was lucky. Maybe he was, but I think he was brave. He left the security of home and set out on a journey into the unknown to become a great player and a loving father. Say goodbye, Grandpa. We love you. Think about you and always remember you. My dad's journey proves one thing. It doesn't matter where you're from but where you're going. And when you get there, it's never by yourself.